at a remote outpost in frozen South Korea. An Army sergeant tunes his radio to the Armed Forces Network to listen as he pulls guard duty along the DMZ. A Selma native living in Fairbanks, Alaska, is hosting a listening party today with his friends who will hear the game via telephone, all decked out in orange and blue. A sellout crowd of 85,000 will watch in person, while 44,000 more, who scarfed up all the available tickets, will view a closed circuit telecast in Tuscaloosa, making this the only game to sell out two stadiums at one time. It impacts the lives of just about everyone who lives here or ever has. If your team wins, seashells and balloons, but losing means a whole year of pure agony. It's the annual meeting between Auburn and Alabama. Hello again, everybody. War Eagle from Jordan-Hare Stadium. In 1989, it was the first time ever. In 1993, it would be the crowning achievement for a team of destiny. For the next three and a half hours, the state would come to a virtual standstill as the people of Alabama witnessed a true classic. Auburn versus Alabama. Victory at Jordan-Hare, part two. For the Auburn Tigers, their quest for perfection had come down to this. A gut-wrenching confrontation with the Crimson Tide. Auburn came into this tradition-filled matchup featuring a talented young head coach and a group of hungry players who had never savored the sweet taste of victory over their arch rival. They had come so far since overcoming the preseason distractions of NCAA sanctions, recording 10 emotional wins, including upsets of Florida and Georgia. But they had never experienced a day like this one. six-yard line by Palmer. Speeds to the 10, heads to the far side of the field, upended at the 20 and dropped at the 23. The Tigers smothered All-American David Palmer on the opening kickoff, setting the tone for another physical Auburn-Alabama heavyweight classic. Motion by Palmer from the flanker spot. Palmer's going to give, going to fake, going to throw. Over the middle, got T out there, knocked away, pass intercept is incomplete. Robinson covering well. Chalone replacing Palmer at wide out. Here's a possession play. Give to the tailback. Looking for room across the 30. Down he goes at the 31. Short of a first down. On the Tide's first two possessions, they could only manage six yards and no first downs. Looking to the far flat and throwing to Palmer. And Palmer is hit. Down he goes. After a short game, Chris Schelling was all over him. With 9.07 left in the opening period, senior quarterback Stan White and the Auburn offense began an impressive march towards the south end zone. Right, White makes the toss sweep, rolls out on the bootleg, pump fakes, going to run. White looking for a block, 40, 45, 46 yard line. Here is White, going to throw out in the flat to Richardson. Richardson at midfield looking for a block, sidesteps a tackle, spins away from another 45 to the 40, and Tony Richardson has a first down on a brilliant run down to the Alabama 36, a 15 yard gain. What a move by Richardson as he did a pirouette at the 40-yard line and sidestepped a would-be tackler and got about five or six more yards. Tony Richardson's dazzling catch and run set up the first scoring opportunity of the game, a 52-yard field goal attempt by all-SEC kicker Scott Etheridge. 52-yard try. 
Rensfield is in to snap. There's a spot. The kick is away. Wind is at his back, and there's a penalty marker down in the end zone for whatever reason. I have no idea. The kick is no good. It apparently is against Alabama. They had 12 men on the field. Alabama had 12 men on the field, and that'll cost them a penalty, and Auburn will get to keep this drive going. The orange and blue quickly took advantage of Bama's blunder. White moved the ball to the 11, then gained four more to the Alabama 7. This time, Etheridge would kick from 23 yards out. Chip shot for Etheridge here, well within his range. Not much of an angle. The ball pretty well in the middle of the hash marks. Carter puts it down. Kick is away. That kick is good. And Auburn has the lead on Alabama. With less than two minutes left in the first quarter, it was three to nothing Auburn. The scoring drive took 15 plays, covered 56 yards, and consumed 7-16 on the clock. It resulted in the 23-yard field goal attempt by Etheridge. As the first quarter drew to a close, the Auburn defense began to frustrate the Crimson Tide. The game plan was designed to take away Bama's biggest offensive weapon, David Palmer. So far, it was working perfectly. But Alabama had a championship defense of its own and it was hitting on all cylinders. Richardson is the fullback. Up under center is Stan White. Going to toss sweep to Davis. They chop him down. A blitzing linebacker, Andre Royal, was there, and that'll cost Auburn five yards, and they'll have to kick it away. Early in the second quarter, Bama got the ball back on their own 29-yard line, looking to shake things up. Bama from the 29 on the toss sweep to Sherman Williams. The tailback comes out over the 35, and down he goes. Very hard, Chris Anderson at the 37-yard line. Got eight yards, here's Williams now in a tailback, and he's gonna give on the end around reverse to Kevin Lee in the open field, 40, 45, 50. Lee may go, he's at the 40, the 35, the 30, down this near sideline of the 25, to the 20, to the 10, he is gone. Touchdown, Alabama, 63 yards. They gave on the end around reverse. Sherman Williams was a tailback, and he gave it to Lee coming to the, back to this near side, and there was no catching Kevin Lee. In an instant, the Tide had seized the lead. Kevin Lee's 63-yard touchdown run shocked the sold-out Jordan-Hare Stadium crowd. The Alabama drive covered 71 yards in just 49 seconds. The big play, of course, was the 63-yard reverse by wideout Kevin Lee. After the kickoff, Stan White looked to get the Tiger offense moving again. Both ends are split from the eye set. Here's a play fake by Stan. He's going to set up, throw to this near boundary. He's got Bailey. He's got it at the 39. That's a completed pass. Diving toward the boundary, Thomas Bailey made sure he kept his feet inbound, and that's a 15-yard gain and a first down. However, just three plays later, the drive stalled, and the nation's leading punter, Terry Daniel, came on to do his thing. Not much of a rush, and he kicks an end over end boot. Palmer calls for the fair catch. Auburn racing down there, trying to down it, and they will at the Alabama three or four. Terry had done it again. His brilliant 49-yard effort pinned Alabama on its own six-yard line. The Tiger defense was eager to press its advantage. Marker trying to change his play at the line of scrimmage. Can they hear him? No. They break out of the eye. Barker again to throw from the end zone. He's in trouble. Barker goes down. That's an Auburn safety. He was hit from behind by Jason Miska. Auburn has recorded a safety, tackling Alabama's Jay Barker in the end zone. Jason Miska, the Auburn linebacker. The sophomore from Bridgeport, Connecticut, walk-on player, hit Barker from behind. Barker trying to throw out of the end zone for a second straight play. That time, they made him pay. The rare safety electrified the Auburn sideline and made the score Alabama 7, Auburn 5. But the Crimson Tide was the SEC Western Division champions. They were not about to back down. 
with a 7-5 lead. Here's Barker out of the eye. Barker play fakes to his tailback, setting up, going to throw long down the field. Lee has it at the 20-yard line and down at the 19. From the eye, toss sweep, tailback. Anderson got some room, 15. He's going to go to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Alabama. Anderson, 19 yards for the score. Nobody laid a hand on Chris Anderson as he got outside and turned that corner. Once again, the tide had struck like lightning. The drive was just two plays and took 22 seconds to cover 53 yards, with Chris Anderson going around the left side 19 yards for the touchdown. With just a minute eight left in the half, the orange and blue had little chance to make anything happen offensively. Bama's league-leading defense had been stifling. The third-ranked Auburn defense had been just as suffocating, although they had twice been beaten by the big play. As the teams left the field at halftime, the scoreboard read Alabama 14, Auburn 5. At the half, Alabama was leading on the scoreboard and in total yardage, but Auburn had more than a two to one advantage in time of possession. Coach Terry Bowden led the Tigers on the field for the final time in 1993, as more than 85,000 fans cheered this most special of Auburn teams. It had been a Cinderella season for these players. With 30 minutes left, would they live out their dream of a perfect year, or would Alabama bring this fairy tale story to a crashing end? Riding a crest of emotion, Auburn's defense turned up the heat on Alabama's first possession. Team from there, Barker's going to the air, flushed out of the pocket, sacked. Back to the Bama 35. Loss of 10 yards. Pelton and Harris closed him out. Big loss on the play as Jay Barker, who was sacked in the Bama end zone in the first half for his safety, is sacked this time by a great pass rush by Auburn. Three wide receivers on this near right side for Barker. Third down and very long. The pump fake by Barker, and they sack him again. This time it's Anthony Harris on a delayed blitz, dropping Jay Barker back inside the Alabama 30, where it'll be fourth down and a half a mile. Defense had ignited the crowd. Auburn's all-time punt return leader, Thomas Bailey, put the Tigers in solid field position. Deal on fourth and 29, will punt it away, and there's another cannon shot, but this one is a low line drive that Bailey will field at his 26 and pick up a block. 35, he's at the 40, he's at midfield. Deal grabs him from behind and yanks him down at the Alabama 45. Ryan Deal, the Bama punter. A 25-yard return by Thomas Bailey, and Auburn's in good shape. But the celebration ended just two plays later. Shotgun, here's White, looking to throw again. This one to the near side, it's intercepted by Willie Gaston at the Alabama 27-yard line. Once again, the Tiger defense would rise to the occasion shutting down the tide in three quick plays and forcing a punt. To the tailback, William racing to this near side and he's knocked out of bounds. Losing yardage on the play, a solid lick by Chris Schilling, bumped him out of bounds back along the 15. There was now under 10 minutes to play in the third quarter and the Auburn offense desperately needed to make something happen. Senior quarterback Stan White had never beaten Alabama. He was not about to let this last chance slip away. Stan took control of the offense at his own 27. White will operate again from the shotgun. White rolling to his left, pump faking, got some room, going to carry it over the 30, the 35, spinning away from tackle to the 40. Great move by Stan White up to the 41-yard line for a first down. Lemansky Hall finally made the tackle, but White showing great second and third effort after he was hit. Along the 30, he was hit again at the 35, spun away and got about five more yards in a first and 10. Alabama with a five-man front, the play fake to Bostic by White. He shoots a pass, it's caught by Derek Dorn for a short gain, going out of bounds at the 46. Here's White, needing six for a first down. 
Stan up under center this time, out of the eyes. Going to give it to Reed McMillan, the fullback, and he stumbles across the 50 and falls into the Alabama 45. Jeremy Nunley tripped him up, but Reed McMillan had a big hole, big gap to run through, and he's got another Auburn first down. Here's Bostic back in at the tailback. Richardson replacing McMillan at fullback. The play fake to Bostic by White, rolling to his right, sending up and firing pass. He's caught by Sanders down at the Alabama 30-yard line. Another first down, a gain of 14 yards. Stan White zipping that one to his split receiver, Frank Sanders, out in the right flat. Suddenly, the offense was generating momentum. It drove to the Alabama 29-yard line, where it faced a third and nine. Stan White waiting for the snap. He's got it. Alabama's bringing everybody. They hit him. He's going down. Through in desperation, pass is incomplete. Could have been intercepted. And White, I believe, is hurt on the play. Yes, he is. Stan White shaking up on the play. They had him twisted around and pulled him down from behind just as he was throwing the football. It fell to the ground, but it could have been intercepted. And as they look after Stan White, a time is called with 6.22 left in the third period. A hush fell over the crowd. Stan White had badly strained his left knee and would be lost for the game. As the gutsy senior was being helped off the field, many thought that any hope of an Auburn victory went with him. White's backup, number 10, Patrick Nix, had completed just seven passes all year long. Now, he stepped into the Tigers' biggest game of the year, trailing 14 to five, and facing fourth and 15. Nix, 6'2", 188, redshirt sophomore out of Rainbow City. And you talk about pressure. Nix this time will go for it with 622 left in the third period. Auburn trailing 14 to five. Out of shotgun, Patrick Nix. Alabama bringing everybody. Nix is going to float one for Sanders. Sanders, oh, he caught it at the two, and he dived in. Touchdown, Auburn! Touchdown, Auburn! Oh, my goodness! Sanders went up over Tommy Johnson or Antonio Langham. He caught the ball at the two. How he held it, I don't know, but he dived into the end zone, and Auburn's right back at the thick of it with a backup quarterback trailing 14 to 11. A 39-yard pass play, Patrick Nix to Frank Sanders. Patrick Nix lofted a gorgeous pass down this near sideline, and Frank Sanders, who's been Auburn's big play man all year long, does it again over Tommy Johnson. The unbelievable touchdown play brought Auburn to within two. The Tiger scoring drive was 10 plays, going 73 yards in three minutes and 33 seconds, capped off by one of the most magical moments in Auburn history. A 35-yard touchdown pass to Frank Sanders from backup quarterback Patrick Nix. When Sanders grabbed onto Nix's miracle pass, he also took hold of the game's momentum. When Auburn got the ball back, the orange and blue began to pound out another drive, this time on the ground. Nix is going to toss sweep to his tailback. Bostic cuts it back inside. 50, Bama 45. He's at the 40. He's at the 35. He's to the 32-yard line. That's a gain of 24 yards and a first down. The offensive line was blowing big holes in the Crimson Tide front wall, and tailback James Bostic was taking full advantage. Patrick Nix out of Rainbow City, the redshirt sophomore is going to toss sweep. There's Bostic looking to get outside. He does, turning the corner. 15, 10, 9, 8 yard line. 13 yards and another first down. Auburn moved from its own 40 to deep into Alabama territory by the time the third quarter came to an end. As it has so many times before, the outcome would hinge on the final 15 minutes. Two points were all that stood in the way of a perfect season for Auburn. Two plays into the fourth quarter, Scott Etheridge took care of the two points. There's the snap, the spot, the kick is away. This kick is good. And Auburn leads 15-14. Etheridge from 26 yards has given Auburn the lead for the first time here in the second half. 
The Tigers' go-ahead drive covered 51 yards in 10 plays. Time of possession was 528, with the Etheridge field goal putting Auburn on top for the first time in the ball game. Now, it was up to the defense to keep Bama at bay. Whitehouse left and right. They need two yards on third down, and barker has got time. Going to throw long down the middle of the field. This one's intercepted. Robinson, 40, 45, 50, 45 to the Alabama 43. Brian Robinson's fifth interception of the season ended one Bama drive. On their next possession, the Crimson Tide faced a fourth in inches on their own 29. It was gut check time for the Tiger defense. They'll go with a pair of fullbacks, Lynch and Turner, and two tight ends. Barker's going to give it to Lynch up and over. Did not make it. He didn't make it. They stopped him a yard short. They stopped him. They stopped him. Auburn's got it. Folks, Auburn's got the ball at the Alabama 29. Who was it? Miska and Whitehead. Miska and Whitehead went under, and Lynch tried to hurdle him, and he couldn't get over. Parker reversed out, gave the ball to Tyrion Lynch over right guard, and a host of Auburn players, everybody in there, eight or nine of the Auburn 11 defenders in there, and Auburn now has an opportunity up by one point, <clears throat> excuse me, 15-14 Auburn, eight minutes, 55 seconds remaining. Auburn has the ball first and 10 on the Alabama 29. Now, Coach Bowden wanted to use the clock and mount one more scoring drive that would put this one away. Out of the shotgun, he's got time. He floats one over the middle to Richardson. Sidesteps one man, 25. Richardson pulls in to the Alabama 20. Fullback Tony Richardson and his backfield partner James Bostic punished the Alabama defense. High formation, I'll read McMillan as the fullback. It's going to be the tailback. Bostic a hold, 15-10. Bostic to five, Bostic dragging tacklers with him to the two yard line. On fourth and goal, Bowden called for a field goal to put the Tigers up by four. Line angle back to the left for Scott. Sean Carter's the holder, kneeling at the nine. The snap, dropped it. Carter racing to the outside. Carter running, looking, will he score? No, he's down at the one. Running to the wide side of the field was Sean Carter as the snap was bobbled. He got up and raced to that wide side. Alabama was able to stop him. Nose end at the goal line. Lemansky Hall made the tackle. Sean Carter, a wide receiver by trade and one of the best holders in the business, was racing to get outside and turn that corner. Alabama had hold of him and they were dragging him down. He was trying to back up into the end zone, but they got him down literally at the goal line. The broken play kept the lead at just one. The Crimson Tide was still in this ball game. That crowd in the end zone down to the south, right behind Barker, making as much noise as you ever heard. Palmer and Malone are the wideouts. High formation in the backfield. Again, Barker out of the play fake is going to throw down the middle. Palmer caught it, falling down at the 24-yard line. Once again, the stubborn Tiger D refused to break. They had completely shut down Alabama in the second half, allowing just one first down, never letting Alabama into Auburn territory. With the Crimson Tide now desperate for a big play, they went for it all on fourth and 10. If Auburn can hold them here, you've got to like the Tigers' chances. With all the noise in the world, motion by Chris Anderson to the short side of the field, slot formation to the left. Barker to throw. Barker's going long for Todrick Malone. Ball is intercepted down at the Auburn 30-yard line. It was Del McGee. Del McGee on the interception. Alabama throwing the pass interception. Auburn's got the football. 15 to 14, they lead with 2.32 to go. On the very next play, James Bostic put his signature on this classic. Two to go on a first down play. Here up the middle, Bostic, five yards, 10 yards, 45, Bostic, 50, Bostic, racing to the 45, to the 40, breaking a tackle to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, he's gone! Touchdown, Auburn! Well, I guess that lets you know that the Alabama defense, Jim, was a little bit tired. Boy, did James Bostic 
ever break that one. He had three touchdowns against Georgia. Coming in this week as the SEC Player of the Week offensively, 183 yards in that game, and that big man just broke it over the right side and outran everybody and broke another tackle around the 25-yard line. Great speed, great power. What a blocking by the Auburn offensive line. 70 yards. Bostick's 70-yard touchdown dash put the finishing touches on this Auburn masterpiece. The Tigers had completely dominated Alabama in the second half, forcing two turnovers and scoring 17 unanswered points. As the game ended, the celebrating began. Nick's taking the snap and falling to the ground, and this one's over, folks. Clock is running down the final seconds. Let's let the crowd count them down for us. It is over. Auburn has come from behind to beat arch rival Alabama. And the Auburn Tigers have put away the Crimson Tide by the score of 22 to 14. 11 and 0, 11 and 0, 11 and 0. The first undefeated season for the Auburn Tigers since 1957 and the national championship year and Auburn's national championship hopes are still alive. It had been a perfect season, one that no one could have predicted, and no one will ever forget. In the hearts of Auburn people, the 1993 Tigers will be champions forever. Let me just I won't be able to I won't be able to suck it, man, and this and it's not gonna it's not gonna be emotional. It is an emotional day and it should be for you from a from a standpoint of being excited about about the events of the day. But I wanted to come by the dressing room, win, lose, or draw, I was gonna be here to thank Terry and his staff and all of the people, Dr. Muse, administrators, everybody, for making me feel a part of this football team. Now, you can't imagine how important that's been to me. The players, same thing. Just, I mean, our relationship, and, and it's just been made my life a joyous one this fall and watching you play, watching you grow, and being able to pull for you, and, and knowing, now, knowing the kind of quality and the character that we had in this program. Now. Some of you may not like for me to say this, but I'm going to say that we did not leave great ability three or four deep in every position. We got enough ability and we got quality ability. But what, what, what I left in this program was some men that had the qualities to go 11 and 0. All right, now let, let me tell you, you that, may, that may not seem so significant to you. But I've been in football 40 years. Today, this year would have been my 41st as a player, coach, and everything. I'd been, I'd been a part of an undefeated season one time prior to this and won championships on every level. This football team in here, if there's ever been a true champion, you have stood the test, paid the price, done everything that you can do when you Got an O at the end of it, men. That's all you can ask. And you've done it in style, and you've done it in class. And I congratulate you. And I ain't got to tell you what you mean to me. And Amen. Terry, I, I deeply appreciate you and all the coaches 
coaches of my coaches that I left here, that's your coaches now, and former players, and your coaching staff that you brought with me, has just been unbelievable as far as, again, making me feel welcome and making me feel a part of this football team. And I shall enjoy this cigar. <laughs> Let me say this. None of you, none of you has had as much fun as I have today because I started this morning early and I've been I've been from one end of this campus to the other. And and I will tell you something, you can't believe what has gone on in this town in the last 24 hours. Hey, you enjoy it tonight. And I know you're gonna handle yourself with class just like you all did. Ben, ben, let's say one thing. Let's say one thing before we bow. Listen, Ben. Today, and I don't have to tell you, but today, you have set the standard. The greatest football team ever to play at Auburn University, 11-0, because of what you did on the field, 11-0. It's never been done before. There's better teams, maybe. There, ever, there, there can be better, but you have done something nobody else can do, and no one will ever take it. You'll be the benchmark that they look to. And then one more thing. Absolutely. Today, I became an Auburn man. <laughs> Took so long. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Let's bow. Okay, buddy. Oh God, we just have, we we just give you thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done for us to give us the relationships, the love between each other, the wisdom that you had to give us the leadership that you've given us, for giving us the opportunity to come to Auburn and to know each other and to take us as low as you could take us just so you could bring us to our highest point. We thank you for all your blessings. Take Alabama home safely. Heal their injured. Be with their spirit. Any glory we receive, let it be in your name. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I just have to congratulate those players and every single person that was in those stands. If ever there was such thing as a home field advantage, if ever a crowd of people became so emotionally attached to a football team, so so uh, the, the spirit of Auburn so strong it started at Tiger Walk. We had some tough times at Auburn, but you know to finish up 11 to 0 at home in front of it, we got the greatest fans in the world, and it's the best way to go out. I, if you were writing a book, this would be the end right here. And Put the period right all... here. I tell you what, I, I hate to end my season like that, but there's no greater win than I've ever been associated with. Patrick did a great job coming in and, and keeping his poise, and, and uh, the offense got it going, you know, started moving the ball. You know, I've just never been associated with a win so big, and, and heck, I, I, my knees kill me right now, but it doesn't feel near as good as the way I'm feeling. <laughs> I thought we were going to punt, but, you know what I mean, I guess, I guess it's just a, something to come in with confidence boosters. Coach Bowden did a great job of calling. I mean, you know, he, he stepped it up when he had to. I think that's the way fairy tales are. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to end. It's Patrick Nix is supposed to come in and throw the winning touchdown pass for an injured Stan White because that's the way this season is supposed to go. I just wanted to do whatever I could do, and you know, I just thank God that he he gave me the the chance today to to do what I did. You know, you know I, I give him all the credit, you know, for putting me in there. Offensive line, running backs, defense, they carried it, you know.
we just believed in ourselves and came out in the second half, played hard, played together, and we pulled it out. Nobody take us away from us. It's the best year it's made five years. It's beautiful. I love it. Well, nothing can mean more to Auburn and this football team after what we've been through, right or wrong. Uh, and that person who I think suffered more than anybody was Coach Dye and his family. The guy who really bought this, brought this game back to Auburn. And the guy that these players love uh, as much or more than they love me, uh, it just means the world. He, he, is, he is responsible for us having an opportunity. The players that he brought, I'm lucky to have an opportunity to coach. And, and this is an Auburn victory, and, and like I said, today I finally get to be an Auburn man.